and welcome to in-game chat for saturday may 31st 2014 this is season 8 episode 22 i'm scott i'm james i'm dennis i'm rj and i'm nathan and welcome to the show everybody if you'd like to get in touch with us our phone number is 334-272-9228 you can check out ingamechat.net for all the links to get in touch with us and you can find us on Twitter at InGameChat as well as Facebook. You can email us, everyone, at InGameChat.net. That was fast. We're streaming the cam feed right now through Twitch. You can find us there as well as join us in the chat room live while we broadcast. Head over to Twitch.tv, look for InGame Chat, and, uh, and there we are. So welcome to the show. we got a full house. Dennis is back with us hey, uh, this buddy. week. You went to MomoCon? MomoCon over in Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, mostly a anime convention. But they were doing a lot of uh, voice acting panels. Uh, several several stars from the 90s, including uh, Rob Paulson, Maurice LaMarche, others along those lines. People that loved uh, hearing growing up and got several autographs and was just great. And you were there for, what was it, all weekend? I yeah, guess? all weekend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Cool. Well, I'm glad you had a, uh, a good time with that. And welcome, everybody, to the show. And uh, everybody as well. Uh, who is listening to us online, radio, in the chat room, on Twitch, ever how you are. We, uh, we appreciate you being here. And uh, I don't know if they've got us on, but everybody over at Retro Game Planet. Um, is that thunder I keep hearing? It's thunder and rain. Yeah. 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 Late Sounds afternoon right. in the middle of the summer, deep wow. south. I can hear that Regular right now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We are upstairs. We're, we're upstairs in the, yeah. in the building that we broadcast from. We are upstairs. And honestly, I don't ever know, necessarily know that this was meant to be... <laughs> I mean, if you look at the building from Offices the outside, <laughs> yeah, right. it's really strange. It's a bit like, like a TARDIS. Yeah. It doesn't look nearly big enough to have two floors uh, that accommodate offices and studios. So mm-hmm. we're very close to the roof of this place, yeah. uh, more so than we should be. But yeah, so that's why it comes in so loud, I guess. You guys probably can't hear any of that um, uh, through the through these microphones. But anyway, welcome to the show. Uh, as you know, it's been uh, it's been a busy week for... for they're all busy weeks lately. They are. Well, it's leading up to E3. That used now. See, it used to be used quiet to be a weeks, quiet week, <laughs> right? That used to be the, the calm before the storm, or, or whatever sort of you know generic term you prefer. But that's gone. That's over and done with. There's like some kind of I don't know how much of it's on purpose. I really don't. Yeah. Or, or how much of it is just merely circumstantial. How much of it is the nature of the fact that we're halfway through the first year of two new consoles, probably a perfect storm of things that are creating such busy news cycles. I think a lot of it is is also, uh, um, I like, it's kind of like the way Star Destroyers would dump their garbage before going into hyperspace. Remember that's how the Millennium <laughs> Falcon, like, they let go of the Star Destroyer and they snuck away, uh, and everybody but Boba Fett noticed. Um, they dump their garbage before they go to hyperspace. That's what's happening. They've got all this garbage information that they don't have time for at E3. Don't, ask, don't ask us about this E3. Just worry about this yeah, now. Yeah, just we, so we don't, we don't want you anticipating it. We don't want you guessing about it. We don't want you upset when you don't hear it. So here you go. Uh, all video games are now delayed till next year. <laughs> yeah, that was surprising um, to see that. Uh, what was it? The Order? The Order 1886 uh, gets a bit of an info dump, gets a new video, uh, which we talked about last week, actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, Some of us just didn't like very much. But then we had um, confirmation or or near confirmation that it's delayed to 2015. Um, That's an exclusive for PlayStation 4 for Sony. That's Sony's exclusive. That's ready at dawn. Right. Um, Remedy, just a couple of days ago, uh, released a new video and a little bit of information about Quantum Break for the Xbox One, as well as announcing a delay to 2015. And not only that, they said, you know, by the way, you're not going to see any of this at E3 either. Yeah, don't talk to us about yeah, it. Don't, I don't ask about, about this. Yeah, I imagine we'll hear more information about the order. Ask um, us about on week two. Don't ask us about Quantum Break. Yeah, I imagine we'll get info about the uh, the order at, at, uh, at Sony's uh, press conference. Even though we know it's delayed, they'll probably have more to show. Um, but nothing, nothing from Remedy for Quantum Break, and of course delayed it as well. And that's Xbox One's exclusive. So both of them right now lost an exclusive for this year. Right. Um, a lot of multiplats. Then I guess is what they're looking at for for the fall. It's really hard to know. I would advise against any kind of guesswork based on what we know now. Yeah. There is an intentionally incomplete picture. If you're the kind of person that's really concerned, if you if you've either bought a new console and you really want something to feed it. 
or if you're looking for the reason to buy one of the new consoles, one over the other for any particular reason, don't make any judgments now. My guess is going to be that maybe they're going to try to close the gap on a lot of things, the gap between announcement and release. We might actually hear, I'm very optimistic when I say this, but we might actually hear about a couple of things at the C3 that we see inside of this calendar year. Mm -hmm. But other than that, yeah, they, I think they really are going to be relying heavily on multi-platform titles yeah. and one or two exclusives apiece. You know, you got your usuals, your Assassin's Creed, your CODs, your yearlies. Uh, that'll be there, and possibly your battlefield. That's right. There was what are we, leak. what's our what's the Call of Duty for this calendar year? Uh, Advanced Warfare is that what is that, that is? The, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. Kevin Spacey I, I, game. Yeah, I literally <laughs> cannot even remember. I know. I, I, you, I Kevin was Spacey like, Simulator 2015. Yeah. I thought, oh God, he's put me on the spot. I can't remember. I just know it it's did. I I really couldn't even picture it in my head. The same generic, lifeless, uninspired imagery kept popping in front of... Which, I guess I actually was remembering the right <laughs> game. It just was not... I couldn't distinguish it one from the other. It's all um, the same. What was the Battlefield Battlefield Hardline? That's... but All right, see, but that's that's in that... That's in the thing... Uh, that's in the mix with all of the things that we don't know. This was clearly a leak. Um, not really an intentional leak, because it was uh, really half-baked gameplay. It's been rumored for a while that mm -hmm. it was going to be cops and robbers. But, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, apparently they're going really strong with that. Did you guys watch the video? I watched uh, uh, about four minutes of it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I don't know, man. It, I, I stopped when it started talking about single-player came in. I'm like, that's not Battlefield. No, but it, no. It isn't Battlefield. Well, but it is, all right, uh, all right, it hey, is uh, Visceral. It is, it is Visceral's game. Yeah. Visceral does single-player campaigns. Um they of uh, Dead Space, most notably. Mm -hmm. But there is something to be said for the single-player campaigns of the Bad Company games. I don't know if you played either one of those. No. Those were fantastic. Great humor. Relatively good progression through a game world that's built along uh, otherwise very strictly Battlefield-type uh, environments. Really, really good, really clever, really fun, had a lot of the right kind of sense of humor, the right sensibilities for what you would expect from something like that. It very much felt side story, even though it was the only story. Uh, and, and at the time, I think we thought it was a bit of a mistake, you know, trying to, trying to shove a single-player campaign into a Battlefield game. But the way the bad company did it was really, really great. So, so they, those two games managed to be both a, a very solid single-player and multiplayer experience. So, so you think this might be along that same line? I absolutely do not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't get anything from it that it's got that kind of charm. Um, it is taking itself far too seriously, uh, at least based on this stuff. I mean, it's, you know. Oh, also, this was leaked leaked information. We, th this we don't is, know yeah, sure no, 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 how this much. Is, this is leaked information. Maybe they're going to do something very clever. I don't think it's going to be bad company style, self-awareness fun like I don't know if I was gonna if I was gonna say you take the sensibilities and the self-awareness of bad company and you move that into a game like what we're looking at hardline then what you would have to have is like a you know you'd want like a kids a cops versus robbers thing right yeah uh, a SWAT versus criminals I don't know how they're gonna frame it exactly but I would expect a buddy cop type of thing something a little bit silly a little bit goofy kind of like battlefield lethal weapon you know what I mean? That, I think, could be really fun. But judging by how they framed uh, their video, that, that internal video, it looks, like it's, they, it looks like it's taking itself very seriously. And I, I don't think it's ever worked out when it takes itself that seriously, uh, at least from a, from a critical perspective. It doesn't seem to have any effect whatsoever on sales. But Now, when you say seriously, what do you mean by that? I, I mean a very... Dramatic story. I mean, like, uh, n not humorous. You know what I mean? Something that's very, uh, I mean, like, more, the, more like the campaigns from the last two Battlefield games. More GTA serious, less Saints Row serious. Yeah, I mean, Saints Row may be a bit far. <laughs> I would say 
uh, less GTA serious, more watchdog serious <laughs> to foreshadow a, a discussion from the next segment. But just something that's like, could you, could you just chill out and realize you're a video game and you should be fun? Stop trying to be dramatic. Yeah. Stop trying to be like a movie. Yeah, just or I don't know, just be a good movie. I don't know. I, I know that serious isn't really the right phrase. Okay. I guess just, but it's. I don't know. Well, Offer up a different word if you yeah, have one, but it's yeah. Essentially, if you if you are if you are making a cops and robbers type thing, man, that is the that is the go to five year old. What are we going to play out in the backyard today? Right. Type situation, which was nothing but fun. So we never took that. Well, we did take it seriously. Yeah, but it's like kids seriously. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. We took it as serious as you could take it being eight years old. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. I, and I, I'm not somebody who believes that comedy needs to be infused into absolutely everything. It doesn't even need to be comedy. Just uh, lightheartedness. Yeah. I don't. I don't. Igno- I don't exactly know what. I just stop trying to be heat. Yeah. Stop trying. Stop trying to be that. Because you can't do that. You you can't. You may think that that's what you're doing. You may think that the gravity of any particular situation or the uh, the intense nature of your characters, you may think that that actually comes across. It really doesn't. It really, really doesn't. Fewer games, I, I would say, overall, fewer games in general need to stop trying to tell hard and difficult ethical or moral stories. They, they really need to stop it because they're, they're very much at odds with their mechanics. Uh, those things are usually more of a show-don't-tell type of thing. I'm not saying that they should all stop, but if you're going to do it, uh, you need to be the last of us. Yeah. If you're going to do it, you need to be better at it. If you can't knock it out of the park, don't take the swing. Put it down. Realize that you're just making a Battlefield game. Give us brilliant multiplayer. The multiplayer tells its own story. It always has. And it always will. Team-based stuff like that always generates perfect, wonderful, long-lived impromptu narratives. I will forever remember a single good moment in a game like that well beyond how I would ever remember a single player story shoved into it, wedged into it, had its chest cracked open, its ribs pulled apart just so they can dump some, you know, gruel of a story right down in where its heart should be. It's nauseating. It's ridiculous. And I, I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen this game. Maybe that's not the case here. And I do like in general what Visceral can do, but then maybe they shouldn't be doing a Battlefield game. I don't believe in it. I don't believe in this game. Yeah. I think maybe this is a bit too much. Well, that's uh, likely stuff that we're going to see more about from EA at E3, but uh, something else that was announced as far as E3 was concerned was watching PlayStation's uh, presentation in movie theaters. Free, by the way, uh, as long as you were able to uh, snag a ticket um, yeah. online and, and get into get into one of the screenings. And I'm sure most of the people who are uh, at least in the chat room probably have a theater in their neighborhood that is doing this. Uh, unfortunately for us, it's about an hour and a half or so for the closest one theater that is doing it. And then... About another two and a half, three hours to the next one. To the next one that is doing it. So uh, we won't be taking advantage of that, but I think it's uh, I think it's interesting. I think it's really cool. And something I said, look... <clears throat> I, th- I think it's great that it's big enough that it's you guys getting fought in a movie theater. Yeah, you guys are already planning on having a a little thing yeah, where you watch all day watch the things all day on monday watch it do our uh, riff tracks of it essentially yeah, yeah, yeah. broadcast it um so imagine going to a theater and and it, it's essentially like it's basically what we do out there is we go into a theater all of us and sit there and watch it um i'd love to be able to to go to one of these things i'd love to be able to uh, to do that if it were closer yeah absolutely if, even if, if i was like, here i still wouldn't be making that drive up there yeah, it, uh, if it wasn't that. like just nine minute drive, and you know, you have to consider you have to get there in between whatever the last conf- major conference is and the beginning of Sony's. Mm-hmm. I, I wonder what that if that w- there will be enough time to drive up to Birmingham from the last comp from the uh, conference before Sony's, whatever that maybe is. Just. Yeah. Maybe just. Maybe just. Uh, yeah. It's uh, not Ubisoft. even Ubisoft is the one right before Sony's. Ubisoft's is, and I'm going on. Uh, I'm going on Pacific time here. Ubisoft's is at three in the afternoon. So that start at five our time. 
Sony's is at six. So it'll be about eight our time. Yeah. So assuming Ubisoft goes an yeah, hour. Yeah, there would be enough time. There'd be enough time. There would be more than enough time. The question is if it's worth it. If the theater is right next to you, I'm sure it's fine. Um, but it's an hour and a half, two hours worth of driving for something that I don't know that I'm going to want to do. Everything but that last 30 minutes, right, which mm -hmm. is exclusive to the theater viewing audience. Right, yeah. That's the 30 minutes that's being hosted and pre presented by Jeff Keeley. Um, my guess is that's going to be pre-recorded. It's not something even you guys in L.A. will see. Mm -hmm. uh, my guess is that whatever swag they're claiming they're going to give away, whatever special prizes are going to be minimalistic, um, except for the fact that I'm not going, which means everybody will be getting a free bag of Vitas. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, free year of PlayStation Now. Yeah, probably something really disgusting like that. <laughs> um, it, the question is, do you want to spend the time on the road for something that you may not enjoy in the first place? Where you know that you could go sit in front of your own device, uh, drink a drink of your choosing, eat a, an eat of your choosing, um, and not have to sit next to people that you don't choose. Have the bathroom of your choosing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, it needs to be special. Now, I will also say that there are a lot of people who don't have uh, a lot of friends directly around them that believe in this stuff, that get excited by this stuff. There are people who um, either aren't in touch with people in the real world who like these things or people who refuse to get in touch with people in the real world for whatever reason, mm -hmm. you know, and maybe enjoying something like this as a group activity would be kind of fun as a change of pace. For us, it's all the time and we see each other too much as it is. Yeah. So, <laughs> Um, and you're going to spend all day with each other on Monday. I don't need, and I don't need to sit in a theater full of 600 people I don't even like yeah. or know. Uh, but that's not the real gimmick or the real surprise. We'll find out, I guess, at the end what that is. Hopefully somebody somewhere will openly and, and, and consistently tweet what's going on in that. It'll probably be leaked. Yeah. Everything else is It'll probably leaked. be leaked if, if uh, the last <laughs> week or two ha is any indication. We'll know. Well, if they're giving something away, then they've got to keep a lot of theater people quiet for this. That's not easy to do. Um, if you know, if they're giving something away to the audience, unless there's a well, I don't know. Well, unless know. they don't announce until they're actually there, at which I mean, at, at which point where it gets out when it gets out in the public, people are going to know. Somebody's going to tweet about it mm -hmm. if something like that happened. Then again, I'm not sure uh, when you sign up to get your tickets. Do you have to? I, I didn't go through this. Um, maybe you, you have to, to sign an NDA for... Well, no, 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 no. Maybe you had to fill out a form that has your information and says, hey, you're, if you're a PlayStation member, give us your, your PlayStation name, I, whatever the case. I, I went through it just for the heck of it. Oh, okay. It, it just, all you had to do is be 17 plus, and uh, it just wanted your name and stuff for when you got there. Okay. And your email and stuff. So yeah, well, you do have to show ID, I think, right? Yeah, you do. When you pick up your ticket, you can't yeah. do it for someone else. And it, the, you can't enter unless you're 17, so you can't have someone else get your stuff for you. Right. Unless you're 17, which I thought was kind of weird, but I guess because M-rated games, I guess. Probably. Yeah, yeah, depending on what they, yeah, especially for what they're they're planning on showing, I'm sure. Um, All right, it's nice to imagine the exclusivity of it and the showmanship of it, mm -hmm. right? Securing a bunch of movie theaters and you know, uh, 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 sequestering like a whole half hour of special presentation for those people. It's entertaining to imagine that they're doing some big. It's going to be all great and amazing. Um, it's fun to anticipate those things. It's, I what's so, it's totally be. fun to get wrapped up in hype when you're convinced that something good is going to come of it. <laughs> Even though you know perfectly well that it isn't. It's just going to yeah. be, it's going to be some, some random and, and unpleasant level of nothingness. Yeah. Uh, but whatever, I mean, we'll find out. Back it's, in the we'll day, it would have been like, here, a free shirt for your avatar in the home. Or, right. you know, for your, your gamer pick on Xbox One type situation. It would be something ridiculous like that. But Day one achievement. But the fact that you're not going to be there makes you think that, you know, it's going to be something that's just going to rip at me that I wasn't there for. Yeah. Uh, so That checkbox will be forever unchecked. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to take a break. Uh, when we come back, uh, we should just dive right into Watch Dogs Talk, I believe. We should get into that. and But we may not. This show goes in many different directions. <laughs> really? Watch Dogs is big news? I had no idea. There is that. But, <laughs> but all, somebody else mentioned, and I totally forgot about this because I don't have a Wii U, but Mario Kart 8, did you play that at all? Oh, no. I haven't turned on my Wii U in like a year and a half. You're so. the only one with it, so there you go. <laughs> I anybody had no idea was out. <laughs> anybody who was anticipating Mario Kart 8 talk... 
That's that's the gist of it I right there for I can talk to you us. about Zombie U. I, I can read the reviews. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to take a break. When we come back, uh, we'll have more of in-game chat. Right now, here's music from Heavy Rain. And welcome back to in-game chat music there from Fallout 3. And welcome back to the show. Uh, going over the chat room here, we've got Cavalier UK hanging out with us. You can join us, by the way, in the chat room. Head over to twitch.tv, look for in-game chats. We're under the category of gaming talk shows. And uh, you can find us and join the chat room and uh, chat with everybody who's uh, listening to the show. And, of course, chat with us while we're uh, doing the show as well. Cavalier UK is in. Uh, Lavos, always in there. Grazit. Gersnort, Nabokov fan, STM Fuller, Stufu, and W. Matthew hanging out in the chat room with us uh, so far. Would love to see your name in there. So head over to Twitch and join us. So this week, uh, Watch Dogs released on a bunch of platforms. Everything, you know, if, if it's still current gen, it had a release of Watch Dogs. And it's getting a Wii U version. Yeah, that's true. The Wii U doesn't have A little bit later yet. on, but it's getting one. Um, so clearly that will be the 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 definitive version of Watch Dogs you, at this point, because, possibly because this thing's running like crap on most PC systems. Yeah. All in, it's. I've about really got to be careful with my language in this during this segment <laughs> because of how bad things. Watch are Dogs running. really leads you to want to say bad words, very strong things. <laughs> It there does. are no. Yeah, Y'all got some rage-inducing moments. On we, there, there, there are no. To step studio for there like are no level <laughs> opinions. There is no baseline emotion regarding this game. It is, it is pretty much, and uh, even the good parts, even the good parts are very, very interesting uh, and good, and want to make you say bad words. Uh, the bad parts are nothing but bad words. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's not even no, no conjunctions, uh, no prepositions, nothing. Just four letters, space, four letters, space. All the way through. Scott, is that dump button working? Oh, yeah, it's ready to go. Oh, oh that won't <laughs> save us. But you've only got, yeah. I mean, you use it, you can only use it once every. You need like an organ's worth of dump buttons. I know. <laughs> topics. Yeah, we got to be careful. So, anyway, uh, yes, the game uh, did release on Tuesday. Uh, amazingly enough, James and I both came out of Russia like last week. It did, yeah. Um, I wonder why that is. <laughs> It was. Uh, it, we got our copies from GameFly on release day. Yeah, they were. They were. Nice. Uh, I had already had the game. They were yeah. doing a better job than they normally do, uh, making sure that they shipped it out and, and in time to account for uh, the U.S. Memorial Day holiday, right, which was, was on Monday. That was on Monday. So we we knew if they shipped it out Monday, we wouldn't be getting, or at least tried to ship it out Monday. We knew we wouldn't get it until probably Friday at that point. Um, but they sent it out, what, Friday? They Saturday? sent it out like Friday or Saturday, so yeah. it actually ha uh, got on our hands on Tuesday, which is really good. I, I don't like to be behind on games like this. I don't, I don't like to be too far behind the curve mm -hmm. uh, on something that many of the people uh, in the gaming world are going to be talking about at any right. given point in time. And that's pretty much been the topic of conversation for most of the week um, as far as 
I, th- look, this is the game that was revealed in 2012 with a with a with a beautiful looking uh, ever how many minute little piece lies. of CG. <laughs> Uh, a piece of lies, if lies. you want to call it that. It was a piece of lies. I don't think it was a piece <laughs> of CG. Right. I, I, it was no, no, not no, 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 no. It was not that, but it was like... It was specifically built to do what it was It was the narrowest uh, vertical slice mm-hmm. I think I've ever seen. Uh, it was incredibly, incredibly am- ambitious. And uh, unfortunately, we're not going to belabor the point of the downgrade, but... It's not a matter of opinion whether there was a downgrade. It simply is not. I recommend that you go... There are plenty of videos where people have tried to recreate the exact circumstances of the 2012 reveal, which can only be done in part because that sequence doesn't exist in the current game as it did in 2012, Mm -hmm. in that reveal. So there's very good video of somebody playing on the PC, uh, comparing the best they can do, the most... the most. uh, authentic type of playthrough they can do and matching it against that segment and i think as a discussion on its own it's worth looking at it because this is how they sell you things this is how they sell it to everybody and it's worth noting that it's not like oh well we found a couple of things that we had to change here and there we had to accommodate certain types of hardware you know so on those things it's no good anymore no this is on pc being compared to the 2012 reveal they don't really look much like one another anymore. Uh, they certainly don't play uh, very much like one another anymore. So, and there was no indication. There was absolutely no indication of what the you know large majority of gameplay would entail. They insinuate. They showed something openly and directly that is not true, which is a graphical showcase. And then they insinuated um, gameplay that had a lot of texture. You know, Mm -hmm. had an awful lot of um, emergent elements to it, had wasn't so dependent on gunplay. They made it look like what gunplay was there was the result of extraordinary circumstances kind of coming to a head and there being no other way to deal with them. But it very much insinuated and in certain ways openly stated that the game is going to be about the meta gameplay, you know, about about fighting using technology not so much guns. Um, that's not the game that we have now. It's pretty much guns all the way. Guns are always the best solution in this game. Yeah. Which is really, really sad for a game that presented itself I, uh, as something that had more to offer outside of gunplay. There, You can tell playing the game there are just a few vestiges of that former thought of using technology as a weapon. Uh, getting into the first CTOS server... Yeah. I, d- I did that completely not going in there at all. You Just can do it completely not going in. And that, see, that's, that's where the problem with this game lies. It is a huge game. It is feature rich. There are features spilling over the top. Um, it's brimming with things to do. Too many things to do. It's yeah. got the kind of side activities in it that they have uh, very cynically tied into your character progress. Um, You know, it has chess and poker and a drinking game and uh, some other, I don't know, shuffleboard, something (laughs) ridiculous. I don't know. Something completely ridiculous. I don't want to, I don't want to sit down with old men in a park and play chess. The cup, the little. Oh, right, right. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. This is, I know it's an open world game. I know why you're doing it. You're actually trying to, to fill your checkboxes with enough features. You're yeah. just trying to account for... It's like, let's make sure when they look at the map, there's tons there's of tons things of stuff to do. for them to do. And they've gone too far. There's just there's too much stuff to do. The basic side missions and the basic game-related side activities, those activities that are directly related to the world as it is... I don't think they stop either. No, they don't. Because I've long since filled out, uh, for example, one of the side mission activities you can do. The crime? Is, uh, the crime stopping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've long since 20 out of 20 would that. Mm-hmm. I still do them. Yep. Mostly because it boosts my reputation That's only when I, I mow down eight or nine yeah. civilians. It's <laughs> I, yeah, it's only when I need a boost of a reputation right. that I do But it though. is there, and it is, it is forever repeatable. But I don't want to play chess. I don't want to do a drinking game. I don't. You don't want to run, out and run around the AR games. 
No, I don't. But every single one of those things is required uh, that you do a minimum of it, right? It's compulsory at some level in order to unlock the certain elements of your skill tree. For example, to get your maximum focus ability, to be able to spend points, to even spend skill points in your maximum focus, uh, which is your slow down time and mm -hmm. you know, your max pain power. power. Right. In order to max that out, you have to you have to either play or win ten games of chess. And like mm. har har, I get it. I'm winning chess. I have more focus. That's fine. But they tie everything in like that. You have to do some basic thing. You cannot say um, maximize your uh, your skill with machine guns until you have survived five waves of the uh, the little AR. Space Invaders game. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know, know and that. it becomes a, it becomes tedium, and tedium, as long as it can be ignored, is okay because maybe someone doesn't find it tedious. Mm -hmm. I still object to it because I think that it's development time and development energy spent padding out the suit instead of just really, really bulking up the game. But whatever, that's that's okay. But when you make it compulsory for for progress in other parts of the game it's not really good but that's this game in its essence it, it, it's it's at odds with itself there is the idea right there was an initial there is a fear fear being a bottomless resource you dip into it you acknowledge that that today in this uh, contemporary real world there is an unstoppable increase in surveillance and data collection the invasion of privacy, or the breaking of boundaries where we assumed there was privacy, where there never was any, or where it was limited by technology. Mm -hmm. um, our fear of the inability to keep our secrets safe, to keep, and I'm, you know, legitimate secrets, like bank account yeah. information and, and all of this stuff. There was a great story to tell there, and knowing the way that game mechanics have developed over the last several years, it's a perfect opportunity for a game to tell that story. And I don't know where it went. I, don't, I have no idea where it went. There was the assumption, I guess, maybe we're wrong for making the assumption, but there was the assumption that I'm some kind of white hat, white knight. I mean, it's, not, it's not just assumption, because they talked about they, it in they some did, of those videos. They did talk about it, but yeah, as but it, it turns out, I'm just a thug. Yeah. Like, you're, playing, you're just playing a thug who's out to steal a bunch of money. And that's it. Somebody comes back on him behind that, ruins his day, and it turns him into, oh wait, he was already a thug. He's a uselessly flat character. Someone chickened out, decided not to tell the exact story that they felt that they were prepared for in this game world, and instead decided to go with just a feature-rich GTA clone. And it's like it's really maddening because a lot, like Dennis said, there are vestiges of all of these old ideas that you can tell probably meant something else entirely a year or two years ago. Um, and they are they are very very cool, but to get it out of the way right away, the story is one of it, it is horrible. It is horribly Abysmal. acted. It is horribly directed. It is written very childishly. Very inexpertly um it's got a very it, it's it's ham-fisted but not even ham-fisted enough to get the point across it's it's not very well done there is a lot of story in the world a lot of that um secret narrative a lot of the types of things that you draw out of the environment but in order to draw things out of the environment you have to as we said earlier you have to dig down into a lot of their stupid mini games or the, the most useless side activities, like the tracking down the QR codes. Oh, yeah. Which basically works out to being something kind of like the audio recordings from, in, from Infamous or maybe like the Riddler stuff mm -hmm. from the Batman Yeah, because you games. have to get like, a picture from a certain angle. From a certain angle. angle. A bit of, bit you of decode a mix. the QR, yeah. and uh, mm. then you get an audio file that helps color the world a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's all very, very good, but I feel... Again, that the subtlety of those things, the subtlety and the delicacy of confronting a surveillance state 
is very much at odds with this just brutishness and stupidity of the story. It's just, it's completely foolish. Um, I'll even go out on a limb to say that the story as it is now doesn't resemble the story as it was before. A lot of us who played mm -hmm. together, um, me and Scott, uh, Dennis, and Jeremy, all like, we're not comfortable at all with like the first hour of the story. It's like, bad. It's we're convinced really bad. that, you know, the dead niece, uh, who is supposed to be your motivation for everything, but why you have gone completely, completely off the reservation and turned into a murdering freak. Um, I'm not even sure if she was in the game before or if she was your daughter before. Why in the world is Aiden more upset at the death of his niece than her mother is? Her yeah. mother just like doesn't. It's her weird. mother's like, ah, it's fine. I'm over it. It's yeah, cool. it's, it's, all, Why it's is only everybody been, it's been a year. What, She's already been dead on? like nine months, man. <laughs> Can we all just move on? Like, what is? Unless it turns out that you have just had a psychological breakdown, and that's <laughs> that's <laughs> like that's too much subtlety. Uh, I don't give them credit for that. At the, just, at the end of the game, it turns out you're Brooker DeWitt, and you've actually been playing Bioshock Infinite in another yeah, right, world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, in which case, I will tip my hat to them. But I don't know. Look, I don't know. In every other open world game I've played, I have enjoyed doing the side activities, whether it's an Assassin's Creed game, whether it's Infamous, whether it's GTA. And eventually, I want to dive back into the main narrative. I want to say, okay, the events of this world are what they are because of this story. The narrative is required to kind of guide me through things. I want to dive back into it. It'll feel good, and then I'll diverge and go play some side activities again. This game, I dread. I, I dread the story missions. I hate them so much. They are so poorly done. And the rest of the incidental What's your stuff favorite side mission? Uh, I really, strangely, uh, I like the... Uh, they don't count as a side mission because they're limited, but unlocking the CT, you know, very much like the the towers in either Far Cry oh, 3 okay. mm -hmm. or in uh, any Assassin's Creed game. In order to get the details on a particular segment of the environment, you have to compromise the CTOS system, right, which is the system that, that is in charge of monitoring and surveilling everything in that area. Um, and the very first thing you do is you have to break into a facility guarded by armed personnel. And be in in I am talking to RJ I guess on this and I guess mm -hmm. maybe Nathan uh in the in in the booth there but uh by break in you don't physically have to actually break in. As long as you can get access to one of the cameras that are within the facility, you can then just hop between camera and camera. You don't even have to enter the the building to actually hack into it. Yeah, there's, there's all sorts of interesting. There's the place cameras. Some of the guards have a camera on their person, so you can actually jump onto them while they're walking around. And essentially what you do is get to, at least in the first one I did, was uh, get to an access panel, unlock it, um, and then like find the guy who has the server access code. Then get into the server room and, ha and install a back door on there. And then you have the region of essentially all your normal actions, like being able to affect traffic and such, unlocked. And then from there, that's when you get what are essentially the viewpoints in this game, the uh, CTOS towers, which mm -hmm. is what uh, you were talking right, about. Right, they're, uh, you have to have line of sight on anything to hack it, to press X or square or whatever and manipulate it. And the gimmick that's at play in the game a lot, and it's actually the core of its strongest gameplay, is you have to have line of sight, but it doesn't have to be line of sight to your character, to the player. You can say, stand in the middle of a street, right? And let's say you need to hack a tower. Uh, but to get up to the tower, you have to unlock a series of doors first. So all you can see from where you are is a camera. So you hack that camera, and all of a sudden, you, it's kind of a telepresence type of gameplay. And so you can control that camera. From that camera's point of view, if you pivot around and say, look up and across the street, you can see another camera. But that one's much higher. So you hack into that camera, which isn't viewable by your character. From there, you look down on a courtyard that's behind a fence, and you can see a control panel, which will unlock one gate and let you in there, where you can then get into another camera, so on and so forth. And you mm -hmm. can infiltrate an entire series 
of strongholds or bases or hideouts and, and dig all the way into a server room and go through that hacking mechanic without ever getting off your motorcycle, you know? Mm. You're, like, uh, you're like Trinity, like in the Matrix movie, just parked mm. on the bike outside of the office building doing everything remotely. And it's borderline brilliant. It's not, the mechanics aren't terribly complicated, but being able to lay that into the world is right on the border of just being perfect. That's when it is absolutely at its best. And you can selectively uh, activate different things in the environment to either distract a guard or blow up a circuit panel and uh, knock one down or kill him or, again, distract him in a different direction. And you can move yourself, your presence, through an environment. And if they had just, if they had built on that, if they had built almost entirely on that, and left the gunplay and the actual open conflict to a point where that it was clearly, clearly your last resort and mm -hmm. mostly meant to deal with an immediate threat so you could get away, we'd have been dealing with a much more intelligent game. And maybe it's an unfair criticism, but I don't think anyone was interested in an intelligent game. I think they feared for how few people would connect with yeah. it if it was that obscure. But it's the obscurity, it's the obscure elements where it's at its best. So, I mean, I finished, what, there are five acts. Uh, my understanding is the fifth act is a single mm -hmm. mission, like fifth acts have a tendency to be yeah. in gaming. I've finished act one, haven't even started the rest of it. I am soaking up the rest of the city, most of what there is to do out there. It's a lot of fun. You can prevent crimes. Uh, you, can, you can profile individuals and prevent um, imminent crimes. You can do a lot of strangely, incredibly criminal activities, like stealing cars and delivering them to a checkpoint. Going, um, going into gang hideouts and just brutally murdering everybody but the leader, and then you right. have to do a takedown on the leader. You have to do a, take, a non-lethal takedown on the leader. Uh, in, front of, in front of the dead really bodies really of all his gang members. Right. Uh, yeah, there's the, and the there's morality no, system in this game is, is a little no, skewed. no incentive for right. doing anything sneakily. Not one incentive for doing anything non-violently. None. Except for the occasional thing that requires a non-lethal takedown for what reason? It doesn't... No. They, there's nothing there. Is there nothing there? Boot, there's no uh, stealth option or anything like no, that? No, there no is stealth? a stealth option. There is simply no reason to use it. There is hmm. no incentive. It isn't like... And I'm not saying like you should always be incentivized to be non-lethal or stealthy. But mm -hmm. if you're going to put it in there, make it twice as hard, mm -hmm. half as fun, there needs to be some option, some reward that is only given for doing a certain number of things in a non-lethal fashion. Yeah. Uh, but there is none. Mm -hmm. there, I don't even know that there's an achievement of any sort. Well, what I was being saying was that, uh, No. But what I was saying was that you had said uh, earlier that you had an option of uh, play, play enough games of chess and your focus will be maxed out, right? Right. But there's nothing like that for your, uh, for your uh, stealth abilities. For your stealthy. stealth or your morality. Uh, your morality, as a matter huh. of fact, l let's talk about the little crime things, right? One of the optional things you can do is, uh, hey, your phone has figured out that there's going to be a crime over here in a little bit. Yeah, this person <laughs> has a potential to be a victim or this person has, right. person has a potential to commit a crime. Like, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Tell the future now. Forget it. No, no, no. Right. Your phone is just a magic device. Put away the <laughs> idea that there's even any hacking going on. There are two things. Um, your phone is a magic from the future thing filled with magic. It's just, ma it's it's just not what it does. technology. It's just magic. It just knows things. Uh, so that's one thing. Your phone is just magical. Joy. Um, it can hack a steam pipe, man. It's a steam pipe. You can hack somebody's grenade to explode. A, I can even I can even wank an explanation for that. I totally can. Right? Maybe they're carrying uh, grenades that have electronic timers. Right, right. You yeah. know? But fine. But a steam pipe's a it's manual. A pipe. <laughs> it is a <laughs> pipe filled with steam. That's it. If you have a pipe and you have some steam, you have a steam pipe. No electronics are necessary in order to have a steam pipe. Maybe, maybe underground you have uh, sloth from the Goonies following you around, and like whenever you send that command, he just lifts up and shoves those pipes into the right. Pipe right. So and then if it would knock somebody over who's trying to take a drink of water from like a like a faucet <laughs> or whatever, stuff happening, that would be great. So just, put, so just to be sure, not the apparatus that controls the steam flowing through the pipes, the actual pipe itself. 
Right. Like yes. like the like the knob, like there's a thing and it's like, "Hey, you can like hack this." Wh- where is the mechanism <laughs> in a steam pipe that makes the the valve fly across the room? I it doesn't matter. Stop thinking. <laughs> it's magic. But it only affects pipes and stuff. So, I don't know, you have to, you just have to not think about it. Uh, which I did and it was fun. But every now and then I'll, I'll accidentally think about it a little bit. Uh, I'll think about hacking that guy's bomb. And that's when those four-letter words start entering in. Yeah, like what? That's the most <laughs> common four-letter word. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? If the question yeah. mark were to count. But so there's that. And then there's pipe dream. Where it's like you hack the flow of the blue like in the pipes. Again. Yeah, it does, yeah. doesn't even explain it, yeah. really. Just like in Bioshock, like, okay. Yeah, here's well, it's glowing blue. That's hacking. God, just get with it, man. <laughs> just accept everything we're telling you. Don't ask questions. Just think it's cool already okay, and just so. do it. All right, don't question it. All right. Yeah. And you'll be totally happy. If you really can't question things, if you, if you have put yourself in a position where you're not going to worry about it, there is fun to be had. But I feel like the game is... It was meant to ask questions. It was meant to challenge the status quo. Like, that's running right beneath the surface of the entire game. Uh, It even pops out of the surface occasionally uh, because different hacker personalities in the game will uh, come to the fore and they'll have something to... they'll, they'll, They'll hijack the public address system or they'll speak to you over your phone. Like, they're constantly talking to you about why breaking down the existing system is good why challenging the status quo is mandatory given the direction we're headed and it's like an allegory that's falling all over itself it's i don't know it's incredibly frustrating for the first day i hated this game i hated this video game and as time has gone on it's become it's become harder because there are things about it um there are things about it i love really and i'm I'm sick over how many really neat ideas were drowned in this game. So do you Had get the feeling? So you get the feeling of what could have been all throughout this whole thing? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I can't. You know how occasionally, you know, you can think, ah, oh, this game is all right, but maybe if they change like this one thing I'd, in this kind of vague direction, I'd have been interested in it. But mm-hmm. with this one, every ten, fifteen minutes, I'm stopping and thinking not about an idea that would have been better, but about how specifically. It, like this exact instance, if they had done, say, this specific thing, the game would be much, much improved. Mm-hmm. I normally wouldn't have a problem. Like, man, I, I have to go back to Assassin's Creed on this. Um, Assassin's Creed is in, what was it? Was it t- two or three? May have been, I think it was in two. Um, when you were able to buy the banks, own property get money basically in the in the in the in the area and they've been doing it ever since like the, the, uh, where you were in the villa no not the but just in the game in general not the villa itself just you needed money to do a lot of things in assassin's creed you needed money to upgrade your uh, your buildings that you bought or to buy new buildings or to upgrade the buildings that were in your villa but out in the city you could own the banks and you could own the other shops and you could go around and collect money uh from them uh, after a certain amount of time, you can yeah, yeah. collect money and get there. It, it partic- mm-hmm. That's particularly in uh, two and yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, subset. I can remember because I was so I was like I need uh, I need money and I'm going to get as much money as possible. I can remember uh, hiding in a haystack and leaving the game running while I flipped over and watched TV <laughs> for a few hours and then pop back over, grab oh yeah the yeah, money yeah, from yeah. the bank, upgrade whatever it was so that you got more money at a, a less interval of time. Hop back in the haystack. I'd have my phone right with me, and I'd say, set the timer, go back, watch TV, whenever it would go off, pop back over. Because it, it would only fill up to a certain amount. Yeah, and it would, like, deposit every, I think it was 20 minutes or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did the same thing in, like, uh, Fable 2 or 3. Right, right, right. So, so I, yeah. would, I mean, this is the, that's the extent to which I would go to collect the money. Uh, Watch Dogs, I'm, I am rich beyond... I was going to say, you get, <laughs> just, like, I've only, I haven't even completed Act 1, but it's like... you. Just have an embarrassment of riches, just sta- standing out there with your profiler. Eh, let me just hack everybody. I don't care about their backstory. I really don't. It's just like you have money, click. 
click, 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 click. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you then can... I get like thirty thousand dollars out of the next ATM I go. Oh, to. don't worry about it. You can then you can you can level up your hacking ability to get even more money. I know. I got I got the. Uh, what it was it, the profiler starts targeting richer yeah. bank accounts. Right, you do whatever. like a like a you get three times whatever mm -hmm. it is because every time you hack a person's bank account, um, that money kind of goes into. It's, I don't even understand how this. It's like, <laughs> uh, it's like six hundred dollars. It's just kind of there, but you have to go to an ATM to get it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, okay. and you can stack that stuff up because you can you can hack tons of people and then eventually go to your ATM and get all that stuff that you've pulled out of all those people, which would mm -hmm. be I don't know, upwards of. Uh, five, six figures sometimes, um, what you're pulling out of there. The thing is, is that I was asking, uh, on the way in, I was asking James, like, how far he was in, because I figured he was ahead of me, because dude's been playing a ton. Um, <laughs> but in the story-wise, he's not. I'm actually further ahead of him. And I was Quite gonna, a bit, actually. You're almost yeah. a full act ahead of me. I am, I am about, I'm almost halfway into act two. Oh, okay, so you're, you're half an act ahead mm -hmm. of me. And... Uh, I wanted to find out if money was going to, because it was so easy to get, I thought, well, there, there's going to be some point where... There's obviously a dump or something in the future. You, need, you need to have so many millions in order to get the good ending or Right, something. it's going to be tough, for, but that's not the case. You can just get money easily. And the other problem with that, just like you said, there's no, there's no incentive to stick to stealth. There's no incentive to not take these people's money. Yeah, the profiler, it, and it's very cute. It does a randomized type of thing and gives you one piece of pertinent information, um, one you know, some idea of like, yeah, this person, if you hack them, you're just going to hear part of their phone call. If you hack this person, you're going to see. And there's a lot, there's a lot there. But as far as the money is concerned, it's just it's a completely random injection based on any particular thing that sh doesn't relate to anything. I mean, I keep. Scott mentioned the morality system. I don't know what to say about it. There's only... If you stop crime, goes up. If you run over somebody, goes down. Does That's, that even have an effect on I anything? I have found no reason to believe it does. Because I, I was wondering if maybe it was like Infamous, where it's like, well, you get these powers if you're a good guy. Oh, man, no. It's not even... No. It's, was, it's, it, it's not even remotely that self-aware. It really just should not be there. Yeah. It In this respect... It should act more like GTA. If they're not going to build on the morality system, then don't don't cut away at me every time I make a mistake and, and accidentally harm a civilian. Um, you're you're giving me that little that subtle lash, that whole like finger wagging kind of like you hit a civilian, so that's kind of bad. And it's yeah. like, well, your driving physics suck and that's really bad and it's kind of your fault so why don't you every much car is back? made by the acme corporation right in this game yeah. right. it's all We're, butter wheels man all over the and whatever the the We're less you spend some more time on that in the next hour i know we're gonna have to the less the the there's like a mid-range and of course if you're if you're on a certain side of it you're in the the public likes you more if you're on the less the public hates you more. yeah Cav right. cavalier mentions that if you're on the bad side of uh, the public is more likely to call cops on you when they see you. Right. Right. But the but the problem is the only way to get on the bad side, it's not about the grand decisions you make. The only way to get completely red is to just be a crazed murderer. Murder spree, yeah. That's it. At least as far as I know. Maybe some complex, multi-layered... Um, there you go thinking again. Very, yeah, right. Maybe <laughs> something's going to show up in the 11th hour that makes it all make sense. Uh, but currently... It doesn't, and I, I imagine we're going to reiterate that point. Yeah, we're going to have to come back because we still haven't even touched on the multiplayer, the the online component. Which is of actually this. it's yeah. one bright, yeah, shining. Moment so we're gonna we're gonna get to that uh, in the next hour of in-game chat. We'll be right back in just a minute. Here's music from Advent Rising.
And welcome back to in-game chat. It is the second hour of the show. Don't forget our phone number, 334-272-9228 is the number. Everybody hanging out in the chat room. You can go over to, oh, we got more people. We can go over to uh, twitch.tv, search for in-game chat. You'll find us in there. Uh, we'll do another roll call. Why not? Cavalier UK, Lavos, is a... Ezor? Ezathor? Uh, sure. Grazit? Gr thanks for the help. Gersnort? Nabokov fan? Omega Men? STM Fuller Stufu? Three Blades joined us. Ulit and uh, W. Matthew hanging out in the chat room with us. And you could as well. Just, like I said, go over to Twitch. Find us there and uh, join in the fun. What, I don't know what the conversation... They've talked... They were talking whiskey earlier. Then they were talking... And they started talking about Watch Dogs a little bit. More like... Hey, I'm glad I didn't buy this. <laughs> <laughs> glad I'm glad I'm, I didn't buy it. Yeah. I, man, is it worth a it, rental, at least? Oh, no, no, no. It is absolutely worth a rental. Yeah. It I, is 100%. Okay. I don't want to... Oh, I hate the fact that I feel like I'm, I'm totally steering people away from a purchase of this game because it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's just not that good. But if you can see it, and I, I, I'm, you have I to mean, experience through, legitim it at least. I, I mean okay. through legitimate means... Because I absolutely believe that where this game is at its best and closest, I think, to some of its original and most perfect unmolested ideas is when you allow yourself completely, when you acquiesce totally to the online connectivity. It's, it's, pretty, it's, it's pretty grand. It's really, really well done in certain respects. Um, it has a host of different multiplayer options, right? Um, you know, we understand now the single player. It's an open world game that is some kind of imperfect, unholy hybrid of Grand Theft Auto, infamous, strangely enough, and your typical Ubisoft, uh, uh, Far Creed type of unlocks and environmental management type of things, right? Crafting. And, and all of these sorts of things. It is throw very, a, very much... Throw in a Splinter in there somewhere. Splinter Far Creed. Right, right, right. Um, the, uh, the, the, their cover system is very... And, and again, I didn't play Far Cry 3, but that's first person. But the cover system used in Watch Dogs is a lot like it was for uh, Splinter Cell. It most closely resembles Far Cry 3. Not in the tower stuff, but... Um, well... Far Cry 3 was very close. You know, you would have to take over one of the mercenary held encampments. Mm -hmm. And there were multiple ways you could do it. You know, you could you could do it stealthily. You could do it with open assault. You could uh, uh, break the, the attack cat out of the cage, right? Because everybody keeps, everybody keeps like a wild cat or, you know, I don't know. A, a bag of wolverines or something like <laughs> in their in their mercenary encampment so somebody can come along and dump them out all over the place but so you have to take over those things then you have to uh ascend every tower to kind of get a lay of the land that's that's as much it's as much of that game as there is to be found here but that's what you've got pretty decent open world um just you know don't ignore it. Go look up some comparison videos. Realize that you're never going to get it to look like it did in 2012. It doesn't look like that. Certain times a day, certain, like, if the light's just right, if it's feeling particularly, like, autumn-y in the world, if the sun is going down, if the rain is just falling, if you squint just <laughs> right, the game looks fantastic. But um, if it's, like, 2 p.m. and nothing's going on and you're downtown, it's well, flat, it's not great. Dennis played it Stop on the PS3. I'm playing on the PS4. PS4, and I'm playing it on the PC. Right. So, essentially, out of all of us, I should be the one with the prettiest thing. Yeah. But I don't. But but no, that. you're not. According to, uh, who was it that did the head-to-head? -head? Always does a good head-to-head. Digital Foundry? Uh, yeah, DF. DF's yeah. basically came out saying, not in so many words, but your best experience mm -hmm. is probably going to be out on the PS4. The PS4. Strangely. And it's now. solid. Very few frame rate problems. There's, it's, you had a lot you know, of pop, pop in, right? Just a lot of pop. It, in. There's a lot of traffic pop in. Yeah, uh, it doesn't handle things that are beyond the draw distance very well for traffic. Uh, humorously, uh, I've had there are certain uh, safe houses in the game, right, that you open up, and there's always a car outside certain ones. And I have walked out of that safe house, run down the road until the car like kind of winks out, uh, and then run slightly back. Until it winks back in, totally new car. 
<laughs> different car altogether. Did this like half a dozen times with a new car every time. So this is part of how we're able to get the performance that we are on the consoles. But look, it's perfectly acceptable graphically. It's not going to give you anything to worry about. Looks good enough. And honestly, I want to play something like the 2012 reveal, but I'd rather play a really great game. Uh, this is neither, by the way. But I wouldn't worry too much about the graphics. Uh, the experience on the PS4 is really, really good. Um, and I'm perfectly happy with all of that. The single player is knowable. It's got a really, really terrible campaign and story. About half of the side activities are really, really fun. The other half are just filler. Yeah, you know? the, um, the side activities that I'm working on and the reason I'm further along in the story is because my side activities, or at least the ones I was interested in, have dried up. Uh, they only get unlocked by batches as you increase. Uh, apparently, or, that's or the as case. You move through the, through yeah, the story. that's that is apparently the case. The burner phones that the first guy, the what was his name, Maurice, I think. Yeah, Maurice. Yeah, the burner phones that he's left behind to get his story. I've still got at least like three of those left to find, but they are nowhere on my map right now. Hmm. Um, the weapon uh, storages that are that are spotted around the place. I've got a few more of those, but there are no more to found. The serial killer side quest situation where you investigate the murdered bodies uh there's i think three or four of those left and they're nowhere on my map that's not unlike ubisoft to, to like no it isn't it, it isn't you have to force people back into the story yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. so uh, so it's like eh, go back in do more story and then uh, and then hopefully they'll unlock that uh, so far as far as i am right now they have not um one of the first things that i did this morning when i got up was like oh, i need to go in and uh and hit all the towers, hit all the hit all the C2S uh, places, and then hit all the towers that unlock from there. And I did all of that uh, and unlocked everything because I thought, okay, this will open up more of these mm -hmm, side quests right. that I'm doing. And it did. And then when I finished them, I was like... It'll unveil ones that are already active, uh, active for you. Yeah. But it doesn't open new ones up, I don't think. Mm. It just shows you where they are. And it's worth noting that you... You very much feel like you have to go unlock all of the control towers because if you go into a section of town that is not where you are not connected to the CTOS facility, you can't profile anyone. So you can't yeah. really interact with the environment. Yeah, you have, you in have any to get the main way. facility, the towers. Are, and it gets even worse if you direct a car chase into one of those areas and you have no control over the traffic lights or anything else yeah. that are going to help uh -huh. you. Because yeah, these well, guys, I will say this, better than GTA and better than a couple of other things. They, they the the enemy in this on on in the car. Persistent, and it, it's probably luck of the draw on what car you get, and how bad traffic might be. But uh, but they're very they're very persistent um, to catch up with you, and they kind of have to be in order for the mechanic to work. The mechanic of you being able to interrupt them, right? Because you security, have to be security bollards yeah. or blockages. You going through a traffic bridge light or in order for you to exploding yeah, yeah exploding steam pipes. Steam pipes. They um, have to kind of right be on your tail so that you get out of danger first, and then you can activate right. it and, and get them. And it's so. like, again, it's satisfying. The, the mechanics are actually pretty good. Uh, I don't like the driving. Shooting is actually, eh, it's fine. You know, it's not... It's shooty bangs, which games have been doing for years. Now. Right, and it's like third-person open world shooty bangs. It's, in my opinion, a little bit better than GTA, but whatever. You will not be surprised or particularly impressed by the nature of what is really happening in the single player here. But... Let's talk about the multiplayer yeah, because there are at least half a different, different half a dozen different things you can do to really engage in the multiplayer. Some of it straightforward. You know, you can say I'm going to I'm going to jump in. What is it like a four on four type yeah, of team, uh, multiplayer. team based multiplayer mm -hmm. where you have to uh, I, I think there's grab like an object and hack it over time, and it's sort of like a tug of war style thing. Nothing you nothing terribly new, mm -hmm. but you know, interesting enough, honestly, given the way that this particular world works and how you're going to interact with any particular, you know, how you're going to interact with the uh, the target or the, the item that you're trying to deal with. So that's fun. There's a free roam, which I have no idea what that does. I, I, I haven't really bothered to get into that. I imagine it's the kind of thing uh, that you and six of your friends get into or whatever and drive around the city till you're bored. I don't know. Trying to come up with your own moments. Yeah. Kind of like the uh, GTA 4 online. Like GTA 4 online. Yeah, where there wasn't really anything going on. You would just get in two sets of cars and shoot each other and somebody find a helicopter and then you'd... Then you fly into the Statue of Happiness a couple of times. Right, and that's about it. Um, 
there is um, an absolutely despicable way for a person on a mobile device to <laughs> uh, to fight against you while you're doing like a checkpoint race, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hate it, I and I will never do it again. Um, the yeah, the, the advantage lies heavily in favor of that of the person on I, your phone was, or tablet. I was hoping there was some that the console player or PC player that something interesting that there would, would be happen. something interesting on your side. But no, it's just you are just overpowered to right. no end in the uh, on the mobile. Because the person device. on the mobile app, you just have to hit a bunch of checkpoints in a certain amount of time. I'm opening it up now so you can see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. uh, but the person on mobile can call cops on you. They can activate uh, security uh, yeah, roadblocks. They can, act, they can activate all mm -hmm. the stuff you can. They can call in a helicopter that's going to shoot at you. Um, they can anything. Anything in the, the city that you would normally interact with to throw off pursuers, they can interact with in order to uh, keep you from getting to the next checkpoint. And you don't really have much in the way of abilities, and you still have to contend with the normal traffic and the normal problems of negotiating the city. The debris... Mm -hmm. The, the unpredictable traffic, um, all of this other stuff. It's frustrating, and I don't enjoy it, particularly. Mm -hmm. um, but it's all... I would, I would almost go so far as to say that this whole thing, that every bit of this is worth it for the one versus one hacking. Mm -hmm. Every bit of mediocrity, every bit of frustrating, criminal, mobile-centric, <laughs> stupid gameplay, every bit of that... <laughs> All of the magic phone stuff, all of the, uh, the, the clearly surgically removed interesting story elements, they are all worth it for the heart-pounding, kind of giddy excitement of hacking and being hacked. And it's so slickly done. It's so beautifully and slickly done. Basically, they're trying... What will happen is you'll be going about your business in the open world. As long as you're not on a mission, and as long as you are connected to the internet. Um, Which, as far as I know, you are every time you start the game. Right. You can disable it. Mm -hmm. But if you allow yourself to remain connected, then different people in the world can invade your game in a slightly Dark Souls fashion. Yeah, I was about to mention. Yep. Like Dark Souls, um, yeah. But the gimmick is that they're another person a little bit like you. They're another hacker that works for another, either for themselves or something else. They're just another agent and no in the world. Uh, well, they, they look like the main character when they're playing. Well, they, everybody sees themselves right. as the main character, right. but it's two separate stories that are happening. If you're running around as the character, if you're trying to complete stories, if you're doing your thing, and you're just in between areas, you are vulnerable. And you'll get a notification... Oh, somebody's, hey, it's this other hacker person. Somebody's on top of you. Somebody's got you. And they, to you, will look like just another NPC in the world. You have to take your phone out and actively go around and, like, profile everybody within a particular search area. Meanwhile, they're, they're stealing your data. And they're trying to avoid detection until they can steal 100% of your data. You're trying to find them and kill them before they can steal it all or before they can escape with any, even a partial segment of it. And it's, it's incredibly intense and it's actually really, really fun because you, at, you, know, you can go around and look at them, but uh, you're really limited in the number of things that you can do. Um, I have been... Let's see, we've all done this at least a little bit, right? Yeah. Um, yep. I've, been, I've been hacked, like, several times already. Um, a couple of guys actually got 100% of, of my data, right? And you would think, like, it's this little circle that keeps shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. Um, but you get, you find yourself getting a little bit wound up as it gets to, like, 80%, 90%. Mm -hmm. And it looks like they're going to run away completely with your data. And you're going to lose points, because there's a separate set of yeah, online it's, points. It's basically its own separate currency where it's like a notoriety, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it, it basically right. is its own little smaller skill set uh, based on how much you have. Mm -hmm. Like getting so much like gives you additional nitro in the online race. Right. Gives you like been, uh, makes it easier to find people when you're being hacked. But every time you lose, you lose points. You lose an absolute number of points. 
and you can lose abilities if you lose enough points. Mm. So you always stand to gain or lose based on the situation. So how much time do you have when you when you're initially hacked before it gets to a hundred percent data pool? Oh, it's something like a minute or ninety seconds at the I most. Say, I think. Yeah. It's it's not. It feels very like long, about uh, when you're doing the hacking. It's an eternity. It feels like about three hours. Yeah, it feels like when you are yeah. being hacked. It feels like about ten seconds. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, but it's really really fun. You you were free to kill them. Uh, one time a dude got me absolutely just got. He knew exactly what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Knew how to make himself incredibly hard to find. Um, and if like if you profile the hacker, if you recognize them as the hacker, the hack is over. It then turns into a chase. A chase. They have to escape with whatever percentage they got. They have to escape your detection and get a certain distance away from you. At which point, you'll get a few points for having identified them. They'll get a few points for having escaped. This is a, like a line of sight thing. They have to be. You have to. You sight. have to line of sight and see them. You can get them through a camera. You can oh, get them okay. in directly. Mm-hmm. But you have to but profile the, And they'll, they'll know as soon as they're profiled. They yeah. know the and then they make up. a break for it. And the, guy that, the, the first guy that got me 100%, I was sitting in a car, just parked on the side of the road, perfectly, perfectly parked. Not weird, not up on a sidewalk. Because uh, I, I had a guy do that one time. Mm-hmm. And I got him because his car was parked weird. Yeah, I was yeah. just thinking of uh, pull up there in a, uh, on a bike or something and just... A bike is not good because it's yeah. really easy to line a sight and get a profile on and it. I'm, and as far as I can tell... I don't think I've seen anybody on a bike. No, uh, NPCs don't ride bikes. Well, in right. in yeah. other words, Motor motorcycle bike. motorcycles, bike, that's what I mean, there's yeah. nobody on motorcycles on the road. There are just motorcycles parked not being used. Right. Ever. That's, I'm Never. not kidding. Yeah, yeah. The NPCs don't use them. Nobody drives them. Hmm. But you wouldn't want them for this anyway. It would be yeah. too easy to shoot you. It would be too easy to profile Right. No, no, no. I agree. But it like, was just something I just realized while we were sitting here talking about. I was like, you know what? I was what? thinking of something more maneuverable because apparently the cars are garbage in this game. Um... Not that I mean, they, they aren't. Uh, I don't. I don't like the bikes. I like the cars better, mm-hmm. even though the cars are horrible. But again, the I, the idea is to remain hidden, mm-hmm. and if they do profile you, to be able to get away somewhat safely. Mm-hmm. But it's a perfect little cat and mouse versus a timer kind of thing, and there's great, great desperation in it. You're being hacked. You don't know who's doing it. You know that it's inside of this little area. But depending on where you are, that could be above you. It could be below you. Uh, they could be hiding in a in a trash bin. They could be just sitting around a corner somewhere. They could just be standing there, looking like another NPC. So you're always watching for odd movement. You're you're watching for weird behavior. Maybe somebody crouching where they shouldn't be. Um, and I totally panicked. I I let one guy get away with 100 percent of my data because I I flinched. I panicked. I shot a civilian by accident. Mm. Um, and they called the cops. Like, somebody called the cops. And I just didn't have my wits about me to stop mm-hmm. that call. So there's, like, I was like, surely, surely they're not going to let cops invade, like, my area when I'm being invaded by another player. Nope. Game doesn't care. And they're like, you're stupid. <laughs> you screwed up. <laughs> now you have to deal with 25 cops uh, and some dude is hacking you. And I just I completely lost my head mm-hmm. um, and was hoping I could get him and started, like, chucking a grenade here they're just randomly shooting everything in hopes that i would just hit him mm-hmm. but no he absolutely absolutely got me mm. um and it was and it was great like i totally did myself in and i have to imagine that dude was having a really really good time <laughs> just watching, watching me completely go to pieces yep. <laughs> I, I i can tell you the i did one where i invaded which is uh i think is mandatory for the game but i invaded another player and uh it's not made, it still sounds like not Dark Souls mandatory. Oh, is it not mandatory? No. no, no if you, if, actually, if you have a, if you have your uh, online disabled, you'll like check your phone and be like, ah, no connection, ah. yeah. and then just go on with it. But, well, yeah. No, I, I hacked this guy. Went to like an alley, which had had like some crap behind me. I was hiding around, uh, duck behind like an air unit of some kind. Yeah. I'm like just watching it shrink down, just watching the area shrink down. I'm like, he's gotta find me. He's gotta find me. He like goes through this gate into this alley, looks around, looking for me, and, like, just runs off. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I was, like, seeing it at, like, 95%. I was like, okay, I've got this. And mm-hmm. just silly to go. I can't imagine if just you gotta, running if, through the back alleys going, like, where is he? If you get 100% without being detected, do you still have to escape an area? Nope. Or nope. is it just done? You, you're done. that fast. Okay. Um, you win. And you can always or pretty much always see where your hacking target is, right? You see, like, a little icon 
floating around on the screen. So you have a general idea when they're coming for you. Um, so you can kind of, you see the eye, like, I, I got a guy today, hacked him in the middle of the intersection, right? Um, installed the back door, it starts counting down. He waits a second, I was like, maybe this dude is AFK. Maybe mm -hmm. he's AFK. Because uh, somebody got me once when I was AFK. I walked back into the room, and like, I'm being hacked. Uh, so I was like, maybe that's it. And clearly he, he realized what was up because it's like car starts like wiggling around all over the place and he jumps out and I'm literally right behind him in my car. <laughs> and I was like, just another NPC, just going to pull over this way, totally casual left turn, pulled into a back lot behind another building and spent the next eternity <laughs> watching him like run around all over the place you know and he would like kind of come close to the alley where I was so I'd back my car up around the corner a little bit so he couldn't get line of sight on me wouldn't see me and uh, right actually right as I dinged 100% he like came around the corner and saw me and then vanished because I hit 100% mm -hmm. so it, I mean, incredibly intense there's a lot and there's great ways where you can game it um just by virtue of indiscriminate hacking in the game, there are certain NPCs that uh, have relationships with the company that manages uh, the CTOS system, the surveillance system. And if you hack them and don't interfere with them, they will report you back to their bosses. They'll be like, dude, just hack me. Like, we're going to put a bounty on this guy. And if that happens, then you become basically a preferred target for other players. Kind of like Sin and Dark Souls, where oh, yeah. you the more, people, the more people right. you, uh, whose game you uh, invade, the more people are going to be coming after you. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, and it's layered perfectly into the game world. It'll happen without interruption. No, it's just the two, you know, your game and, and the invader's game are blended together perfectly. It's never about direct conflict. Well, it is sometimes about direct conflict, but it's mostly about this weird little cat and mouse structure. And it's incredibly well built. It's incredibly intense. Um, I would imagine a bunch of uh, videos going to be put up uh, for this part because it sounds like if you want to watch it, go go yeah. find streams. There are people who are streaming mm -hmm. invasions yeah. only. Yeah. Um, and it's it's very very cool. Um, it's probably the best aspect of the game available. It's tied really really well uh, into the into the game world and into what consequences there are. Indiscriminate behavior, and that's in the, the game. and that's the best part of the game. It's it's a pretty good part. So I don't want to say that it's merely average and that's the best part. It to me is the most uh, most well designed element. Fair enough. Sort of balanced against what we thought the game was going to be. I don't know. It's it's tough. You know, we've been waiting on this thing now for two years. Mm -hmm. We've been hoping that they would deliver on the promise now for a while. It's sort of exhausting to be at this point and to just have to... Well, like we said what, a couple of weeks ago, or maybe even just last week, it's done. It's out there. It's over with. We can stop, you know, we can stop the yeah. the speculation, the talk, everything. Now we stop know... Stop wondering if this is going to be the thing we wanted. Yeah. Or, or what it's, it's going to be at yeah. all. And And my guess is that, barring any sort of incredible development, you know, from like space... Or whatever. This will be the last time you really ever hear us talk about it, because it's done, it's gone. I'll, it'll, it'll be it'll be along the same lines as GTA Five. When's the last time we talked about that? When it yeah, came and I mean, I think we're a little unique in that. I don't think any of us liked it enough to really mm -hmm. go on about it. In general, it was well received, and I think a lot of people really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, but the the way this schedules out, I mean, goodness, next episode will be lots of E three speculation talk. Yeah. And, and, you know, whatever else. And then after that, it'll be the after E3 stuff. And uh, this will well, be... Well, and, and then that's that's like, you know, there are calendar years, there are fiscal years, and then there are gaming years. Yeah. And gaming years start with E3. And at least a certain respect in terms of knowledge and understanding and news and really what we can expect to see for the next year. So, uh, in a way, there won't be any room for something like Watch Dogs in another week. Yeah. And my guess is, given the way games work, as brilliant and fun and just straightforward and, and in certain ways clever the multiplayer is in this game, I don't think it'll be anything... I don't think it'll be there to any great degree in just a matter of a couple weeks. So, uh, it is absolutely worth a rental, in my opinion. Um, but, 
I don't know. After all, I think it's just a great example of managing expectations. Yeah. Yeah. I paid 35 bucks for it. I, I'm, I'm not upset that I bought it. I am very glad I did not pay full price. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's, you know. Yeah, I mean, that, that's my thought is I'll eventually, like, get a copy of it, but not now. Yeah. Not, not at 60 bucks. I would say whatever full price it is, don't pay full price. So even if it drops, if it comes down and their full price b- starts at 40 yeah. wait for sale then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't say that, oh, well, now the stand, you know, the regular price is 40 bucks. Good. It's cheaper. No, it can be cheaper than that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, just because just of that first hour alone, it, it can be cheaper. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we're going to take a break, and then when we come back, we'll have the final segment of in-game chat. Uh, and I have no idea what we'll talk about. We've got lots of things. Plus, uh, you can chime in with your calls, 334-272-9228, if you would like to uh, get in on the discussion. We'll be right back in just a minute. Here is music from Kingdom Hearts 2. This is titled The Thirteenth Struggle. So maybe, Dennis, you'll recognize oh, this. Yeah, but here we go. <laughs> Welcome back to in-game chat music from Silent Hill. Do you know which the, one, Dennis? The original Silent. Hill. That's the this first is one. The, uh, uh, what plays in the uh, attract mode essentially for the game uh, plays the little full motion video movie and everything hmm. before you start. I don't think I ever played that one. Good one. The uh, original PlayStation one. Yeah. Okay. And uh, that, that, that was one. Yeah. yeah, they they did a. Uh, it's not quite a. Uh, Reboot, but kind of a reimagining for uh, oh, the first one for Shattered Memories, okay. which was on the Wii and PS2. Mm-hmm. Really good. Well, welcome back to the show. It is uh, the last segment of this episode, and uh, we've got a phone call. And if you'd like to be on the phone with us, you'd like to get on the show, give us a call, 334-272-9228. On the phone right now is W. Matthew. Hey. Hey. I was just calling. I, I have two new stories you might actually be interested in. First, on the PC side, AMD accusing NVIDIA of their proprietary tech making watchdogs not run well on AMD cards. Kind of, They're kind of a bit of hypocrites in that regard. Mantle is the same way. It doesn't really run well on NVIDIA cards. And yeah. the other is PAX tickets sold out in 22 minutes. Now, was that... Now, let me ask you about that. Was that, as far as the PAX tickets were concerned, was that the four-day passes... Because I think it was, I think the four day passes went very quick, and then, like the rest of the week or the rest of the uh, the showtime, uh, started falling out. Then I think it was like I thought it was ninety minutes or less than ninety minutes when like the whole thing was sold out. No, it was no, it was at most. Four day passes were sold out in literally four minutes. I know because I got in the queue about a minute after they went on sale. The the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday were in 22 minutes, wow. and the Monday was like 45 minutes or 39 minutes. I got all four days, but they were single day passes. But I got all four; they sold out quick. Yeah, no, I got all four. I didn't. I didn't get. Uh, I didn't get a four day pass, but I got. I got single day passes. 
um, yeah, for, for all four days. There. Yeah, so same thing for me. But okay, let's go back to the AMD and the uh, and the NVIDIA uh, skirmish situation. I realize that AMD is trying to say that that NVIDIA sabotaged it, but look, Watchdog is sabotaged regardless of. <laughs> I was going to say like, uh, yeah, it runs like crap on AMD cards, and it runs like crap it on NVIDIA, NVIDIA cards. cards. <laughs> Um, so much crap that they released an NVIDIA card this past week. Yeah, uh, for three grand, I think is how much that one was was going to run. But uh, but yeah, I I I saw this. Did you read any more into this? I, I read this? a little bit of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a little. Uh, it's very hard to. F- I'm not a. I have no fandom where these things are yeah, concerned. Yeah. I am. I have just historically been more interested in the AMD parts because they're the price performance, just the basic price performance, which is to say I can spend uh, a lot less money mm-hmm. and do almost as good as you, yeah. who is always going to spend more money. Uh, I've just I've been with them for a really long time now, and it's just because every single time I have to buy a card, uh, they offer better. They, they, it's just better. I look at what's out, and I think this is this fits my budget, gives me more. And really, kind of seems a bit more like the the range I always buy for myself. Mm-hmm. So, I don't feel a particular way about anything other than to say that it's incredible. You're right; it's incredibly hypocritical. It's also really, I think, pointless type of arguments between the two of them. But and it seems almost a little bit petty because Nvidia has what ten points of margin on them. I think in the market. I think AMD only has something like forty percent of the market, it, it, right? Uh, AMD is forty, and uh, we're roughly around there. Last I saw, I was around sixty. Nvidia forty, uh, AMD, and then there's yeah. a little toss up there with ATI. Right. That's. I mean, that's and that's fine. It does seem a little bit petty. It does seem a little bit strange. However, I kind of. Not the specific argument, but I sort of enjoy that they're going after one another. I think that it's a byproduct of intense competition. Because the last year has had an awful lot of back and forth in terms of... The previous, what, 10 years have mostly been about raw performance. Mm-hmm. Now they've spent the last year arguing about features. And I, I just find that inherently interesting. Um, Mantle maybe wasn't all that great, but now we're talking about free sync versus G-Sync. Um, there's uh, NVIDIA's been doing really well with all of its uh, uh, platform specific feature sets that are going into these other games so maybe maybe if NVIDIA hadn't been doing such a good job with a lot of their uh, unique uh, post-processing effects and rendering things then AMD wouldn't feel so pressured to do something like FreeSync to create an open standard that's available for anything. I don't know. I feel like it's Kind of petty, really should be beneath companies this large, but at the same time, I think that it's just, uh, it is the competition getting a little bit heated. I enjoy it. It reminds me of the hardware competition from the 90s. You know, Glide cards versus yeah. uh, DirectX cards versus OpenGL cards. Um, that's a perception issue I know largely. But God, I forgot about those terms. It does, it does remind me an awful lot Open of those GL. days. Well, I mean, OpenGL is still a Thing. Glide is sadly not. A I thing. know, but it used to be a box thing. It used to be like, here's oh, all yeah, the box. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> um, it, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, it seems like part of it, AMD might actually be trying to dig themselves out of a hole. I don't know how profitable their graphics card side of it is. I know their processor side is not. And it is causing their company to actually lose pretty decent money. Right. That is true. Yeah, they are. In uh, in the realm of GPUs, they're doing quite well, and in APUs, by the way, you know, with all of the little socks that they're putting in the in the consoles and into mm-hmm. uh, high power tablets, low powered laptops, things like that. They're doing really, really well, but they've been getting thwomped in the CPU market for years. So, I don't know. I wish them well. I really don't want to see the GPU side of things suffer too much. I really, like, I really don't. I really I don't want them to suffer so much in the CPU market that yeah. that that really eats away at the Hey, CPU throw in the, I like just that. keep the competition going make make that comp- bring that price down. <laughs> mm-hmm. Give us the performance and bring down that price. Right. There we I, go. I'll, That's really all that matters, isn't it? 
Yeah. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna be honest. I do like there's a feature on the Nvidia cards, the stick GTX 6500 series and later that I actually really do like. It's the hardware in and. Uh, 624, I believe it is, video, hardware video encoder, oh, allowing yeah. me when I do stream and record, I don't have to use my CPU to do it, and therefore right. make games run basically as if I wasn't streaming at all or recording at all. That is true. That is true. They have solid features. They have solid cards. Nothing against their cards at all. And it isn't like they've actually had to make special deals for enhanced performance in certain games in order for their cards, in order to make up for the fact that their cards are not good. I think at most it supports the idea that their cards are good, but they're also pricier. They are, they're a bit more of a spendy part, pound for pound, than the AMD cards. But, uh, yeah, I see it. It's there. I like that the competition is in front of us. I don't think, and I don't that think, it's taking us somewhere. Yeah, I don't think Watch Dogs was the best game to base their argument on. I'm pretty sure they have some, some leverage there, but, man, Watch Dogs runs like poo. On on any card, and even on your better systems, it is just not running the way it should be running for 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 what it's been doing. In fact, the um, that automatic thing that Nvidia has the the GeForce Experience, whatever that thing's called, that kind of says, "Oh, we see you have these games, and here's the optimal settings for the rig that you have. Uh, here's what you do." If I put that on Watch Dogs, I am I am going to throw up from the frame rate that I get out of that, which is horrible. So I say apparently when uh, Total Biscuit did a video on it, apparently he can't even run that. Apparently he can't even run that game at full high settings with his CPU and graphics card. That shouldn't happen. What does he have? He's running like a Titan. Right? Yeah, he's probably trying yeah, to get. Yeah. He's probably trying to get like. He, he runs dual Titans. Yeah, he's probably trying to get sixty frames per second. And that is that is yeah. actually always a, uh, a real problem. SLI support, good yeah. SLI support for SL, like but, multi-card configurations is sometimes lagging mm -hmm. very much behind uh, support for single GPUs. But he here's the thing: he doesn't actually use the SLI support for games. He uses one card to run the game and the other card to record. Oh, okay. He, even on a single okay. GPU situation. He cannot pull 60 FPS constant on high on that game right. for a game that is not graphically intense, does not really look that good to begin with. Right, it would be okay uh, if it did. It, everybody would actually be fine with particularly PC people, really, really love uh, for the capabilities of their rig to be stretched to the maximum, but that's not what's happening. No, it's not. The, the, your, capability, like your, your ability to reason out why it's happening is stretched to the maximum. Um, I mean, at this point, I can make, I can make, uh, well, I haven't installed it, but everybody, everybody likes to compare Sleeping Dogs to, uh, as far as the graphical quality of, of what they can get out of Sleeping Dogs, uh, as compared to what they're getting out of, uh, out of Watch Dogs. But, you know, I can take something like, uh, I can take something like Assassin's Creed 4, uh, and make it run 60 frames or higher. And look and and still have that those settings max better than I can on Watch Dogs. Um, Watch Dogs, I'm getting uh, everything is on ultra except for the detail and the textures. Those are knocked down to just high. Motion blur is turned off. Depth of field is turned off, and I'm getting 45 to 50 frames per second out of that. Looks great until things start getting hurried on the screen I guess you could say as soon as there's a lot of traffic and I'm doing a chase mm -hmm. and, and my car starts smoking or something like that it's going to bog down to 15 20 frames per second yeah. it gets really bad during some intense moments but uh, but yeah and, and it shouldn't it shouldn't be doing that not, not on I've run a I run a 680 uh, uh, yeah yeah I run a 770 my, my only weak point in my system is actually my CPU at an i5 quad core but that's not that bad yeah, I'm doing an i7 3770K, I believe is what I've yeah. got on mine. I yeah, it. what's your overclock? It is not. Yeah, overclocked. okay, why'd we buy a K again? Because it's <laughs> more? No, it was cheaper. <laughs> no, well, it wasn't it, cheaper. No, of course it was. No, I got it very, I got it very cheap, and it was it was affordable to get it, it, it to get the K yeah, whatever. over the other one. Whatever. I can overclock it if I want to. You never will. You'll put it out to pasture without ever overclocking your your. Incredibly overclockable CPU. <laughs> At least go one number up. He doesn't know how. 
I don't. I'll have to look up how to do that. <laughs> I don't it's know. on fire. Did we, ever, we put a no. We did. We did actually. We even put an aftermarket cooler on it. We put a Hyper Two Twelve on your CPU, and you won't overclock it. We did. No. I trust me. Yes, we did. This is not the. This is the one I built by myself. You weren't there. No, I know, I but mean, I'm saying when you were like going through the list and everything. Oh yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. When you were building your parts. Yeah, yeah. It was like you you need to put this on there because the K is overclockable. You're about yeah. to drive poor Nathan suicide. Jeez. I'm gonna say to be honest, I have an i5, and I probably won't have to replace that for a good five or six years. A lot of the games are not really taking advantage of it, and a lot of the system intensive games are not system intensive because they're they look good. It's because they're horribly optimized. Yeah, it's true. I'm still running a uh, uh, an i5 2500K. Yeah, Which, same. That's what I'm running. Right, and like overclocked. Not, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, not not like a not a super aggressive overclock. It's a mild overclock, but um, that I mean, and not for nothing, the i5 2500K is going to go into the annals of best among the best CPUs of all time. Um, just as again a price performance leader mm-hmm. that just gives you great overclocking performance with minimal effort rocks it for years and years and years solid and just keeps providing what it's meant to provide it's really hard right now you're looking at a really old i5 you know you're looking at a relatively old core but you just can't bring yourself to upgrade it because it's some of the best money you could ever have spent on a on a pc core and also you really don't need much more than I have a quad core at three gigahertz unoverclocked, but at the same time I'm looking at it. Most games only use two cores anyway. We're only right. getting to a point where games can use literally more than three point two five gigs of RAM. Yep. We'll We're check back. To the point where I like what like why would I even care to go above a four core when no game I play uses four cores? Nope. Exact no, exactly. I think I think we check back again next year. The promise of these new consoles was the ability to always build up to larger pools of RAM, mm-hmm. um, 64-bit, you know, addressable space in RAM, mm-hmm. and to use, you know, multiple logical cores in a CPU to really, really put my hardware to work. And they're they're not; it's not there yet. They're still they are still servicing the old consoles, which means really changing the nature of how these games use memory and CPU and GPU. It's not we haven't taken that step yet. I think we check back in the better part of the year, see what's happening in 2015. S- I don't know, we'll know. Uh, uh, PC guys are generally very very in tune with the health of their system if they built it themselves. And right now, uh I've got a 7970 um and uh, uh an i5 2500K and I'm still very very happy. Still a tough little system. Hey, we appreciate the call, uh, Matthew. Yep, thank you. Yep, thanks, thanks man. Thanks so much, man. Good one. All right, we've got a few minutes left in the show here. Go over, uh, I guess, you know, what's... Got what's little quick hits, little stingers for the end. What are we going to do next week? What do you week? find? What, what do you find? We, what what do are we find? playing? What are you going to do? Did anybody get to Wolf Among, uh, no. Wolf Among Us? No. Okay. No. That snug up on me. I didn't even see that 4 was available until uh, last, yeah. what, Tuesday? When, this past They're trying yeah, to make up for Tuesday. lost time, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, please, please, please don't spend too much time remembering that we left you hanging for two and a half months. <laughs> right. Here's, here's like three, four, or like two, three, four. Yeah, Telltale has been doing great. It's like every other month you get a new episode of either Walking Dead or, or yeah. Wolf I Wolf imagine Wolf. they're trying to wrap it up for things like Tales with Borderlands and Game of Thrones to start. Yeah. That not little, necessarily that entering development, of, uh, but getting into like really. Well, that snippet of uh, Borderlands stuff looked okay. Yeah. I'm I mean, I'm, you know, I know what you guys do. <laughs> it really I know what Borderlands looks like. I know what you do. Hey, wouldn't you know it? These screenshots look exactly like what I expected. Yeah, exactly. Uh the Game of Thrones stuff is going to be more interesting. Yeah. And uh yeah, I was I, that it's a very short episode by the way. Uh it seems to be um episode 4. It's very short but sets it up for Well, you know, they they're uh this was news. They're bringing them to the uh, PS4 and Xbox 1. Yes. Uh, both seasons of Walking Dead and Wolf Among Us. Mm-hmm. Uh Definitely confirmed discs, not quite confirmed on digital yet. They didn't say anything about a digital release, but I imagine that's coming yeah. as well. Uh, what's next week? Anything released next week for us? I have the I have that really cool calendar you showed us, the Playdate thing. Um, 
I know Ultra Street Fighter 4, the digital version, is going to come out on the 3rd. Right. Ultra Street Fighter 4 on the 3rd. Murdered Soul Suspect Wildstar on the 3rd. Is that the... Is that the, the MMO? MMO. The main release, though, I guess? Because mm -hmm. it's... Yeah. Okay. Um... Yeah, Murdered Soul Suspect is about the only one I'd be interested that, that in That one there. looked interesting. Um, I've seen some news items about 1001 Spikes, but I don't know anything about it. So. Nathan, did you play anything this past? I know you didn't play Watch Dogs because you wanted to hear what, us, what we had to say, and you had no interest whatsoever in it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was going to eventually play it, just when it became very cheap. Did you play anything uh, since the last we spoke? No, I haven't really played anything. Okay. I should say I did see an interesting thing. Uh, while I was away last week, uh, one of, one of the web games I play, uh, Kingdom of Loathing, did a live Twitch event where they developed new content live over the stream, where you could like see all their tools and everything. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting, and accepting contributions to like, you know, what do you want in this new area we're opening, and only kept it open for the duration of the Twitch stream, which is around nine hours or so. It was really interesting to look at, and nice piece of. Uh, something go back and look at their archive and check that out but actually i have been playing some i forgot i was i've, I've almost beaten out last i mean i know it's a quick game but i've been playing that on playstation 4 just because it was free so. just because it was free yeah. exactly speaking <laughs> of free me <laughs> which they're, yeah. they're uh they're reconfiguring the uh ps plus yeah uh reward system which i don't know i guess it depends on what hardware you own whether this is good news or not um but they're doing it's gonna be six games a month now mm -hmm. Um, all released on the same day, not piecemeal or not at uh, different points in time throughout the month. Uh, two for Vita, two for PS3, two for PS4. That is a reduction, I think, in the month-by-month -month count for PS3. They were doing three. Three, I think. Yes. Three. At some point, so it's a reduction for PS3, but up to two games uh, per month for PS4. Which, uh, And if you own all three systems, then Bonanza. I mean, it's really fantastic. It's like 72 games a year. For your $50. That's, that's mm -hmm. a ton. I mean, it's huge. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, so I can understand people who were really, you know, I'm very sorry you're only getting two free games a month now on your PS3 <laughs> instead of three. But um, it's nice. They seem to be tightening it up a little bit, being a little more consistent with delivery. And that clearly means that they have a good plan from here forward mm -hmm. of what to release on the PS4. And there's not a lot on the PS4 right now. So nope. that means they're confident in the amount of titles that are coming for the PS4. It'll be interesting how this works with PS Now. Um, if you're a PS Now member and a PS Plus member, can you play those free games on Who your PS4 right from the PS3? I imagine this is going to be one of the big E3 uh, bullet points for Sony. Yeah, that's interesting as to as to how that might come about. I know Xbox One, or at least Microsoft, revealed their Xbox One games for gold program. You know, they've had their games for gold thing. If you're a gold subscriber, you get free games, but it's only been on the 360. Mm -hmm. And it's been crap games, by the way. Not necessarily crap games. They've actually been good, just very they, they, old. They put out, I think, Saint, yeah, Saints Row the Third is the latest one, I Saints think. Row the Third was one. Which they, was a PS Plus title the year before. Yeah, yeah. They, they <laughs> it kicked was. it off with, what, Halo 3 and Assassin's Creed 2. Uh, when they kicked it off last summer. Did they kick off of those? I thought they said those are ones they like said at E3, but then those didn't come out for like another six months. Uh, you're right. You're right. Uh, I think one of the first games they did was Defense Grid. Because it, it's a great they, game. Because then, then they were saying, oh, we, we were just using those as examples. Right. That totally was not going to be the initial yeah, yeah. one. It's like, thanks, guys. But Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade or something is going to be the one for... Uh, I think for for the for the 360 for next month mm -hmm. will be free, mm -hmm. and uh, a couple of other things. It, it's it, it looked better. It looked better than it had looked since they started the whole thing, mm -hmm. uh, from when they showed it. So, anyway, I think that'll do it for us. We've got to go. I want to thank everybody for showing up in the chat room. Thanks for everybody joining us as well as listening on the stream, even on the radio. And thanks to everybody who grabs us each week from iTunes or however you get our show for later use. We do really appreciate it. Go to ingamechat.net and you can join us on Twitter, also on Facebook, and our forums at coloniagamers.com. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you're on Steam, we've got a Steam group you can join up with over there and play games with us and other listeners. So we really appreciate everybody. Uh, thanks for listening. Have a great week. We will see you next Saturday. Here's uh, This is Chrono Trigger.
And Lavos is themed, by the way. 